Hey, what's up out there, addicts? We're back on the beach again, and today we're talking triple spin glow setups for steelhead. I know if you guys have been following us for a long time, you've seen this video before, and you've actually seen it with Bill. Oh yeah. A couple, it was I think two years ago when we were still fishing addicts northwest. So we're gonna kind of do a little refresher, talk about some new things that we've learned, give you guys an update, and hopefully you guys will learn some stuff. Be sure to please tap that subscribe button, and let's jump into this video. All right, guys, so first off, I wanted to introduce Bill. This is Bill with Millennial Coons. So hey I've been friends with Bill for a long, long time, and he always used to be the guy that would give me my coon shrimp. He'd hook me up with my coon shrimp, and now he hooks them up because he makes them and he sells them. Yeah. Talk about your venture, like why you decided to start your own coon shrimp business. Well, I was on the beach with you, and you were running another company, and I was like, why are you doing that? And you said, well, if I was running the best, then, you know, come out with them. So I did pretty much what I did. I challenged him. I, yeah. I said, hey yeah. dude, like freaking put your money where your mouth is. And he did it. And it's it's been really cool to see, you know, uh, just another small business being successful in the Northwest. And I feel like we should all try to support small businesses as best we can. So I've been supporting Bill as much as I can. And at the end of the day, I'm fishing coon shrimp that work and that's all that matters to me. And so I feel like when I put a millennial in the water, I'm gonna catch fish. So be confident about the bait that you use. I highly recommend getting out and trying some millennials. Let's talk about this setup here. So I'm running, I know you like Lama Glass Rods, you're using some Lama Glass Rods, but I'm running an Okuma 9, I like the 9 foot. I know Eric talks about doing the 10 and a half foots, but I like a little bit shorter and lighter rod, specifically when I'm targeting steelhead. Yeah. Just cause it's more fun to fight them. I don't feel like you need that longer presentation, especially when you're running it out with the rocks. It's not like you're exactly. casting it or anything. So, exactly. and you're the same, yours is nine foot, right? Nine two? Nine two. Nine, nine two, two. Yeah. so nine two, this is uh, 12 to 25. I think yours is pretty similar action. Yeah, I've, that's honestly, this rod's perfect. So I, would, I would run either one, it doesn't matter. So anywhere in that nine to 10 foot range, key, key point to it, you definitely want to have a line counter. You want to be able to dial in where those fish are at. As you're running it out there, you want to drop it in that column. When you catch a fish, you want to be able to know where it was when you caught that fish. So super important to have a line counter. I do like the low profiles just because they're a little bit easier to grab when you're going to rip a fish out of the rod holder. They're a little bit easier to get in your hand and exactly. get on the reel and pick up that slack. It's more lighter, exactly. nicer feeling in your, exactly. in your hand. Okuma low, low pro line counter is what we're using. Any line counter will work, but definitely check these out. Now, 50, actually I think this is 65. I think I'm running 65. What kind of, what pound do you use? What I do, 65 power pro. 65, what do all you addicts out there, if you guys are doing the plunking out on the Columbia and in big rivers, what's your line preference? Do you like 50, 65? I know a lot of friends that run 50 and I know a lot of friends that run 65. So I think I had jumped up to the 65 pound. It seems to be what I prefer. You get rid of that abrasion, especially on ledges and stuff. When you're running through sand, you know, it's, I mean, it's small rocks. You're a lot of abrasion on your line. So I like 65, it's, you don't have to retie so much. Exactly. Now, let's freaking head over here and check out the actual business end. And I'm sure you're all wondering how the hell we're gonna get this monstrosity out into the water. We're gonna go through that as well. Make sure you tap that subscribe button. Let's head over here and check out this setup. So what I got here is I got my 65 pound braid coming down to a three way. And I'm going about two and a half feet, three feet, anywhere in there. As long as it's shorter than the line in between your three ways, then you're doing good because they're not gonna get tangled up on the on the additional line, get tangled into each other. So then I'm just running running it down to, uh, this is 20 pound, running it down with a number six spinning glow. Sixes or fours, uh, fours are really great in the spring sometimes. Uh, I've noticed a lot of guys catch more fish on fours earlier in the spring than sixes as you get into later june and july kind of water, the water clears up water clears up fish funnel more i feel like sixes start to produce more so that's i'm running sixes today that's just because that's what i got and i'm confident in but a lot of guys run fours and they do great that's a that's a good way to think of it are you still running the p-line cx leader is that still your preference or yes. what are you running yes. or is always, it cxx i always run cxx p p-line um this is 20. Uh, I usually like 17 pound if you can handle a Chinook, but it's thin enough that it's not ripping up my coon shrimp and stuff too. 20 pound, I feel like you start getting a little bit more curl on your line and it starts affecting how your coon shrimp sits with your hook. So that's why I like 17 or 15. And some of this stuff, guys, when you're watching it, it, it feels like it's like we're being too anal about it, but sometimes that's what it, you need to do is that extra 5% to be 
the steelhead think about all the coon shrimp and all the setups they're seeing as they cruise up the river so if you are the the one steel the one time where he sees by and he sees it's perfect he might eat it yeah because that's just how i feel i i feel like presentation and scent are hand in hand i mean 50 they go 50 50. exactly honestly the yeah, presentation's big so cool moving on three-way coming from the top three-way we're gonna run down and we're gonna do five and a half to six feet of 30 pound cxx down to our next three-way the reason I'm doing five and a half to six feet is I feel like in the spring or early summer, it's more effective to have a wider spread as opposed to later in the summer where the fish funnel more and water temps come up and water gets clear. Then we, we usually run to three feet in between and tighten up our spread because the fish are more funneled. So five and a half feet down to our next three way. And then again, 20 pound down to our size six spinning glow and a one-aught must-add hook. Again, one, one more time, we're gonna go another five and a half feet down from the middle three-way here, down to our bottom. Again, 20 pounds, same, same setup all the way down, guys. I just lost my coon shrimp down on this one, I'll have to retie it, but same setup. From there, well, actually, guys, we'll throw a coon shrimp on there really quick just to show you guys how, again, how he, how he throws those on there. Yeah. So from your bottom three-way, I send my spinning glow off the middle, and then to your bottom, we're, we're just running like, yeah, I don't know, maybe that's 16 inches to the rock. Sometimes I do eight to 10, I don't, I don't think it really matters. Once you get your line angle going, and you know, especially off the bank, you know, you're, you're running a lot deeper out the water, so. Um, on that, we're running eight to 10 pound tests, just so you can really break that off when you go to hook set into the fish. We'll show you that in a little bit. Just make sure you get a decent sized rock that it'll actually break away that test and you're not going to be pulling the rock in while you're trying to fight a fish at the same time. I've seen a lot of guys lose fish due to that. So definitely want a big enough rock, but you don't need too big. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that you can go too big. It's a little overkill. You just don't need it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Now let's talk about how we take this monstrosity out into the water. But first, let's rebake these hooks real quick. So right now we're just going to kind of sift through the jar. There's lots of good shrimp here. I mean, you know, we're chasing steelhead, there's sockeye in the river. You don't you don't necessarily need to pick through it. These are all gonna catch. So here, look, this looks like a good one right here. I'm just gonna come through the side and I wanna say the second knuckle up from, from the shell on the head here is where I'm just gonna kinda come into the shrimp softly. Kinda wanna be gentle but firm with these guys. So come out through the head. Subtly bring that around. So it's just gonna sit really nice and straight and flush. And we're gonna feed some line out here of your egg loop, hook that tail, snug it up. And this is kind of the reason I don't really care for 20 pound too much. That's why I run 17 to 15, but that'll do. And you got a nice bait presentation. Now talk spin glow color. Do you, are, you, are there ones that you prefer or what, what do you think on that? Uh, I, I definitely use a lot of blacks. Um, you know, but I I see a lot of guys catch next to me, you know, with, with brighter mylar wings and yeah. stuff. So don't don't be afraid to try those. I I don't like the mylars. I, I tend to stick away from them unless we have a sockeye open in the lower river, you know, yeah. then, I'm, then I'll throw them on there because you get some extra fun. But uh, other than that, no, I stick to dark colors and yeah, blacks mainly. Cool. All right, now let's freaking move on to running this thing out into the water. Hey, Charles, you want to run this guy? This is what happens guys when you don't pay attention. Charles just ran over his own line. So now the, now the evening just got a lot more interesting. Let's go down here and check it out. What'd you do there, bud? I thought I ran over my own line. I thought you had like a, a freaking ripper Chinook on. Where is it? Dude, is it hitting your prop? Where is it at? It's under his skag. No, it's in the fall. Not that bad though. Oh my God, dude. How is that even possible? So basically what we've done here guys, we've given Charles the rock and we're using a boat 
to run the line out. This can be a kayak, it can be a raft, it can be whatever you feel comfortable and safe in. It's nice to do it in a boat because then you can find the ledges and stuff with the fish finder and really drop it good. Charles, drop it off that like 12 to 14 foot ledge. Should be like right in there somewhere. I remember we, we used to drop at 160. I should just tell him to drop at 160. Keep going a little bit. Right there. That's 160, 16 feet, is that what he said? Yeah. So then when he drops the rock, he's gonna let it go. And you just, I let it free spool. You let it free spool? Yeah. So I'll usually let it free spool, boom, right there. You feel it hit bottom. And then you're just gonna take the rod roll and then talk about, Bill, what you do now once it's in the rod holder. Yeah, so all I do now is I'm just gonna kind of let it settle for just a second. We got a little tension on there. I'm just gonna kind of feed some line in there. But you wanna be delicate because you're only running eight to 10 pound out there. So we're just gonna feed a little bit in, load this rod up, get it to where the line's pretty tight but not too tight. And that'll, that'll do it about right there, so. And what's nice about the way this is set up is what I've seen happen so many times is the fish ha hits it so savagely that the rock breaks and the fish literally hooks itself. So by the time you get to your rod when you're running halfway down the beach, the fish is on and you pick it up and you got it. Yep. So that's one scenario. Another scenario is talk about what you need to do Bill, and let's not break the rock because I want to actually try to catch a fish. Yeah. But talk about what you would do, you know, pulling the rod if you were getting bit and the rock hadn't broke. You know, like setting the hook. What, what, the hook? So if, What's normal practice? So normally we'd put a bell on here. Got a bell in my pocket. Um, grab a little stick off the beach or something and stick it in an eye. I like these little bells better rather than the big ones because it doesn't mess with these really expensive rods and mess up my eyes. Um, when the rod goes down, you hear your bell ringing, it's, it's pumping, you know, it's going. You know, I run up, I grab my rod, I pull it up, and I'm gonna set hook and do a quick, I'm gonna put my thumb on the spool, if it's not already taking line, which sometimes they are, but most time not. I'm gonna put my hand on the spool and, and then lift up and do a hard, good steady hook set and then reel down on it, see if the fish is there. From there, I mean, pretty much you fight the fish and get it to the bank. That's when the fun starts. Yeah. So what he's talking about is you can basically find like, you're just gonna find like a little stick. And I, I kind of agree with him. Eric uses those ones that you you hang onto the rod, but I actually prefer these bells better. You just find a little stick, attach it to the stick, and then Perfect. build, you just find yep. find one of the eyes and stick it in. And that like right that. there, just a nice little thrust on it. And it falls right off usually before you even get to it. So it doesn't mess up your eyes, it's great. Uh, that's why I really prefer them. They're cheap, you know, buy 20 of them because you're going to lose a lot. You know, tie, tie spin glows to them. Yeah, tying spin glows to them is an awesome little trick because it seems like when you're plunking, you lose so many freaking bells. So that's definitely a trick you got to use. Yeah. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's the setup. That's how you get out here and target these with three spin glows. The advantage of this is that you're covering such a wide water column, such a wide range of water, you yeah. know. So any fish that's moving through those, those areas, you're, it's going to see your stuff. So. That's why it's so effective, and a lot of times that's why guys will fish this rather than be in their big 22 or 24 foot boat well, fishing on anchor. We have four guys on the beach, we can sit here, have a good time with the dogs and kids and whatever. And, and run all different lines. Stagger them and build a wall. Exactly, you build a wall and it, it, it's very, very effective. So get out here and try it. Make sure you guys check out Millennial Coons. I'll put a link to his website right down here below. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you on the river.